Yo, what's up guys and welcome to a brand new video over on the channel covering so rare. So today's video, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be talking about bidding and uh, basically helping you guys with some tips and tricks to increase your win percentage and uh, just, I'll say, overall tips and tricks when it comes to bidding. So um, before we do start, there is no better video to be a little bit of a sellout on this. If you are going to sign up, you know, I would recommend using a referral, which is down below. Reason for this is if you sign up with a referral and you do win five cards on bid, you will get yourself a free limited card, which is tradable and uh, it can help add to your profits. Whereas if you don't sign up with an affiliate, you're not going to get that free card after winning five cards of a bid. But just a little plug right there if, if you aren't already signed up and you know do have any interest. But I'd imagine this video more, you know, caters towards those who are already playing. So without further ado, let's get underway with the tips and tricks. Coming in, the first one is you've got to be setting your expectations in win rate being a little bit, I don't know, maybe a little bit lower than what they already are. Now, I say I've been trading for about two, three weeks. So I've got a fair bit of experience on this. And if I go and send over to new card auctions, what you can see right here is you can see all the cards I've tried to win. So I've tried to win 1021. Sorry, 1020. So 1020 cards. That is a lot of offers. But what is my win rate? 127 so just over 10% probably coming in about I, don't know, I imagine about 12% win rate Which means I only win one out of every nine ten cards I bid on so when you guys are coming to me going oh, I can't win any deals Ah, oh, you know bidding doesn't work and so on you got to understand this is all win rate You know if you're bidding on ten cards only expect to win one so That is uh, that is the first thing I, mean, I can show you right here the amount of auctions I've lost you know cards on cards on cards on cards on cards, on cards. And some of them, you know, the person who are bidding me might have got them in quite a good deal, but, uh, you know, I say it just is what it is. So when it comes to bidding, first thing is uh, maybe lower your expectations and win rate. You know, I'd like to back, I'd know what I'm kind of meant to be bidding on these players. And again, you do get a lot of people really, really overpaying on bids because of the affiliate card, but still, you know, there's still deals to be had. As you can see, you know, when we're bidding, we are winning one out of every ten. Now it comes to bidding, what am I doing? So I'm heading over to the new card auctions now obviously depending on what your uh, budget is depends what you want to do here i normally go 50 cent minimum obviously and then i go and lower this down to about 20 euros obviously depends on the budget you're trading with depends on how low you have this i when it comes to trading i'd always prefer to get 10 cards at five euros and one car or two cards for 25 euros always comes a lot easier when it comes to trading so the second bit of advice is when it comes to bidding, don't be looking for deals here. Very, very, very rarely am I ever getting deals here. Where am I getting deals? I'm actually getting deals probably from about here onwards. Uh, and as I say, when it comes to bidding, or when it comes to so rare even, um, the price increments which it increases on are relatively large. As I say, let's go and find a player who can give me a nice example. Daniel Perez right here, right up for 18.50, 18 euros 50. Well, you know, maybe, what would you say, the next bid should be, you know, no more than 19 euros, 50 cent more. Well, actually, in reality, if I want to go and bid again, I've got to go and bid 20 euros, 46. You see that? That's almost a two euro increment. And as a result, you can really see that when it comes to bidding, it really favours the person setting the price than the person following the price. So, you know, right now, so I'd prefer to be the guy who sets them at 18.50 than be the guy who has to go, oh, is he a good bid at 20.50? Which is the whole reason why you scroll to this page rather than doing this page. Because on this page, there's already been a lot of people who've price set. And again, price set means they've basically gone, that's the maximum I'll pay for them, boom. Whereas if we go on a page, we can see that the majority of the cards are, you know, 2 euros, 5 euros, 3 euros, 2 euros, 1 euro, you know, 1 euro 40, 80 cent. We can see the majority of these cards are very cheap. And as a result, we're going to be that person who price sets. And again, if you're going to be that person who price sets, not only is, are the majority of the cards you're looking at going to be the ones that you're going to be bidding on, but it, you know, it also means that you've got a higher chance of winning the cards and you'll be winning them at a higher profit. We just come to my next point. You guys might be being a little bit ambitious with the profit. In reality, you want to be looking at about 10% of what the card you're bidding on. So if you're going and bidding on a card that is 10 euros or 10 pounds, you want to go and buy them for 9 pounds. So get them 10% cheaper. If you're looking at somebody who's 20 euros, 20 pounds, you're looking to get them at 18 pounds at most add another pound to 10 percent so maybe you know two pounds cheaper but again two pounds cheaper on a card that's 10 pounds is very hard to win you know trying to win a card that's 20 pounds trying to win it for 17 pounds a lot lot easier 
So that's another rule of thumb uh, when it comes to bidding is uh, don't try and bid, you know, uh, don't try and bid on a card that's 50 quid for 20 quid. You're wasting your time and wasting your money, which could be in a different player. So that's the uh, that's another thing I'd say is, you know, don't try and be overly ambitious. Again, last thing you'll be doing is trying to win a card on bid for £20 when it's normally 50 That just doesn't happen. Like, generally, the win rate of that is so low, it's not worth your time. You're only looking at cards that, again, are something you can bid 10% cheaper on and then let it be. So, I guess uh, we might as well cover this one. It's here. I think it's quite given, though. But how do I know what they go for? Well, let's go load up Daniel Perez as he's, uh, as he's starlighting the video right now. Daniel Perez of Club Rouge. And what we're going to do is I look at the data right here. We're coming in at one one week, really. And we're looking at 20 euros, 21 euros, 19 euros, 20 euros, 20 euros, 20 euros, 20 euros. We ignore the blues because, as I said earlier, people overpay on bids. So we've got these two right here. So there's not a crazy amount of data, but we kind of go off the presumption that he's 20 euros. 20 euros. Maximum I want to go and bid is 18. Therefore, I'll be honest, this guy right here is not getting himself too bad of a deal. But let's go and try and find someone we could actually go and bid on. What about Daniel Brozyski? Daniel Brozyski. Are we worth anything nowadays? No, we've been, we've been heavily dropped. Right, let's go and find another one. Let's go Daniel Gra Granil. No, we're going to butcher your name. Granil, sorry. And no, he's at 660. So right now, what we're getting is actually people are price setting on this page. So people are price setting on this page, you just gotta to go to the next page. Obviously, the further you go back, the longer you have to wait till you get quote unquote outbid. But it's, you know, it's like, there's no point bidding on cards if you're not gonna be the person who's price setting, um, unless there is a big enough price. Let's look at this uh, Damio Liak, let me yak this guy. And again, you know, we're looking at five euros 20, five, six euros 20, sorry. Six euros 20, again, the minimum I wanna get them is one pound cheaper. Like, I, I, just because six euros doesn't mean I wanna go 60 cent cheaper, I'd say at minimum you're looking at a quid. So I'd probably leave that and move on to the next card. But why I say with this is, you you know, the patience is another thing. There's always going to be another deal. There's always going to be another, there's no reason to go, oh, well, I'm not getting a deal, so let me just go 20 cent cheaper. You're wasting your time. There, there will be another deal. It really just comes down to patience. And again, like, if you can't price it on this page, go to the next page and so on and so on and so on. So uh, that's another thing I would say is don't try and bid on cards that are just ending. Find out where's the ground where people aren't price setting and then be that person who price sets 10% cheaper than what they normally go for. So another thing I would look for is try and avoid the top five European leagues and under 23s. Now the reason for this is you've probably got two people on the bidding market. You've got one, people who want to trade and two, people who want to build their teams. Well, people who want to build their teams, there's a much higher chance they're maybe entering champions of Europe or maybe they're un entering under 23s. Well, as a result, they are looking at cards and so are traders. But if you're looking at, let's say, I don't know, an MLS player, or you're looking at a Japanese uh, player, because those SO5s, SO5 leagues are nowhere near as popular, you're going to have a much higher percentage chance of winning it because you're trying to win a pile of trash that, you know, isn't as popular for players. But a pile of trash isn't bad because a pile of trash still has value, but it's not being looked at everyone because a lot of people go, well, it's a pile of trash, it's no good. So what I would do is I try and stick away from looking at the top five domestic leagues. That's the Prem. Sorry, not well, it is, but so the Serie A, the Liga, the La Liga, the Bundesliga. I'm not too sure if there's if they include the uh, Liga Nos in this, but um, yeah, you're trying to avoid those leagues and then the under 23s as well, just because again you've got people entering the under 23s. So someone like right here, Dan Danage Mismic would be a perfect uh, perfect example because. People who are trying to build under 23 rosters aren't going to be buying him. People who are buying Champions of Europe uh, rosters aren't going to be buying him. So he'd be like the perfect player that the only person really looking at him are people who are building All-Stars um, and just Europe. So let's go have a little look and see if he's actually a bid. Danny, Gel, Missick. It's all just about lowering your competition. Here we go. Here we go. Coming in a... Two euros forty, two euros forty, two euros forty, two euros forty, two euros forty. Yeah, sadly, I'd have to get him for one euro forty, which no. I say the the last guy, this guy, would have got him, but got out bid. But uh, there you go. That is a, another tip and trick to um, I guess win a higher bids is try and go for cards that are only really being bought by traders rather than people who are building their SO5 rosters. So what an interesting observation uh, I made when just looking at what the uh, bids I won is quite a lot of the bids are just a very small increment above the, the round euro. 
So what I mean by that is you'll see that this one right here is seven euros 12, so 12 cent higher than the euro. 10 euros 07, seven cent higher than the 10 euro. 14 euros 04, four cent above the euro. 20 euros 14, 14 cent above the euros. 23 euros 02, two cent above the euro. So what I've kind of uh, come to, this, I, I mean, I, I do this, um, I do this consciously, is when it comes to bidding, I'll actually go and bid, if I have the choice of going for, let's say, six euros 83 or seven euros, o, seven euros 03, as long as it's not biting into the profit too much, I prefer to go with, you know, just above the euro than just under the euro. I think it's a little bit like, obviously, why, when people are selling stuff in real life and it's £9.99 rather than a tenner. I feel like, you know, 10.03 to the average person looks a lot more than, you know, 9.97, just because, again, it's just psychologically. So when it comes to bidding, what I'll do is I'll make sure I bid just above the euro rather than just under the euro, because it just helps with profits. So I found this example right here. We got ourselves um, David uh, Selecki. I would, by the looks of the data, say he goes for about 8 to 8.5. Again, we can look at the previous data because obviously we've had a bit of a cup week. So you could say about 8 to 8.5. So what I do is I want to bid on him uh, for around about 7. Well, when it comes to bidding, what we could do is we've got a few prices we could go and bid. We could go and bid 6.74 because that would make us you know, a nice little 2 euros. Or you've got the alternative a 7.02. And this is what I basically mean by this is bidding just over the euro you know, it all comes down to, I guess, psychological sort of thing, but uh, it looks a lot more than giving people the option of going bidding just under the euro, which again would be six euros seventy four. So like, for the majority of the people, the like thirty cent difference isn't going to have a, much of a difference, but it's just what it looks. You know, it's, it's just really again, it's just psychologically pricing. Not really, I guess, not proven. But if I just go back and look at all my data, there is an insane, insane, you know. I, obviously, it could just be because this is what I'm bidding, but there is a sane cor insane correlation in me mass winning cards and bidding just over the euro. Uh, so that's another thing I would recommend. As long as it's not biting into your profit too much, do be looking at, you know, just bidding just over the euro rather than allowing there to be like a 30, 40 cent uh, wiggle room uh, under the euro. Just again, so when the next person goes on bids on it, it doesn't look as appetizing. And the final thing I do have for this video is when it comes to bidding, obviously, you can only do this when you get a little bit closer, but... Bidding between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m. can be absolutely insane. Like, there can be some insane, insane deals. And that is because it's between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m. it is the least active. Obviously, there is a massive European player base, and put it politely, the, the non degens of us are, uh, are not awake between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m. And as a result, it just leaves for an open time to bid. Because the thing on So Rare is you can't scroll, unless you're, I guess, specifically searching one player, more than 25 pages. Well, as a result of not being a scroll more than 25 pages, you can't look at stuff that's ending on a bid seven hours in advance unless you're, you know, lowering the criteria as such. Which means, like, for the average player, that you know, they're not going to be able to see these. So what you can do is you can basically go and scout a bunch of deals that are going to end between two to five. Obviously, you've got to, you know, work out the maths and work out plus seven hours to whatever the time is or whatever. And that's another decent time. That's like someone showed me just the other day. There was, a, I think, like a 300, obviously, it's a bit more expensive, but there was a 320 euro average selling card when it sold for like 220 euros, just because it was a completely, you know, <laughs> completely un, you know, un not unacceptable, but, you know, just not a normal time to be awake, and as a result, we got way less competition. So that is going to be the final bit, is 2am to 5am. Obviously, I'm not recommending stamp to 2am, 5am. You just basically pre-place your bids, go about 10% cheaper than what they sell for, and obviously you're leaving yourself a nice little profit. But that is going to wrap it up for advice on increasing your uh, bidding win rate. So main things... Just expect about a 10% win. Don't go for anything less than 10, 20%. Otherwise, you're going to be decreasing that percentage, maybe down to, you know, 6, 7% chance you win cards. Um, try and keep out of under 23s and top five uh, European leagues. And um, yeah, bidding 40 minutes onwards. I think that's about wrapped it up. But thanks for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow with a brand new video tomorrow, which is, I think I'm going to do a video showing all the deals that I can manage to get in an hour. So you guys get a bit of an idea of what happens in one hour's worth of so rare trading.